two, let me know how this looks. Does it look better? We're on the hot spot now. chat better better okay keep me posted keep me posted Yesterday went really well because I had you plugged into phone charger the whole time. Let's try that. Am I like the worst tech streamer you've ever watched? It's like the lowest tech possible. <laughs> um, I never say hi to you. Hi, Alabama. That makes me feel bad. Did you intend on making me feel bad by saying I never say hi to you? What was your intention there? Is it to get my attention to say hi to you? The psychology of humans. Fascinating. Um, Okay, ID, IDK, if this is an American thing, but in elementary school, when you would walk to the hallways as a class, did they make you put up peace signs and a finger? No. No, not at all. Bye, Penny. Um... I just know that at this point, holidays are going to be good and bad. Um, so, you know. The expectations of others is not my thing. The word and concept of the day is enmeshment. Would anybody like to explain to the class what enmeshment is? related to mush, but not really, no. <laughs> Good try. These, these things. Guys, I can't find my baking, oh, it's right here. Couldn't locate my baking scale for a second. Are we ready to see a gushy banana? So transparent, you know it's gonna be sweet. Enmeshment, spelled E-N-M-E-S-H-M-E-N-T. Yes, exactly, Gary. I have a lot of problems with enmeshment. I am learning that consciously now um better late than never it is when i can't feel better until the other person feels better which you know is a tall order especially when you aren't even concretely sure how the other person is feeling most of the time i'm just projecting how they're feeling it's a lack of boundaries for both myself and the other person and can become super unhealthy and untenable. This is only 71 grams of banana. 
We're gonna do the stuff. We're gonna do some pear puree. looking to be about oh so 70 grams of pears. Pear and banana sitting in the tree. E-N-N-E-S-H-I-N-G. Sorry I lied, it was only 60 grams of pears. But guess what folks? We're gonna keep our pear liquid going, but this time we're gonna drink this after warming it up and we're gonna make new pear liquid. No plans to upload videos or vlogs. If you wanna unsubscribe, do. I don't know when I can return to that life anymore. I have zero motivation right now. I do enjoy going on these lives, but Beyond that, no. You know, but life goes through changes and I feel like it's kind of cool that I'm allowing myself to not keep doing the same thing. I realized that I got tired of doing Budget Eats. I think the last two episodes of Budget Eats, I was just like, really? I still have to do this? Um, but now I don't. And I feel free. Er, freer. Not free free, but freer. Um, and it's cool to try to follow your instinct a little bit. Not to say that I have a new direction, but just because I don't have a new direction doesn't mean I have to keep going in the other one that I've always gone in. This is gonna be a weird cake, y'all. Bring out my spice grinder and we're, we're gonna grind up these nuts. These nuts. Um, and I'm also gonna make peanut butter out of the remaining peanuts that I roasted last time because I just keep eating them like a maniac. I always knew that that was gonna be the case. But. like a crumbly dust. Which I can use for dukkha or I can use for baking. No, we're just baking because why not? And I had a banana that I needed to use. So that's what we're doing. All right, this bit started turning into butter, so we'll add it in here. Visit went well, Julie. Thank you so much. 
so much for asking. It was a very pleasant time and really, really was very grateful for how it went down. And, you know, I think my dad softened with age and I did too. And I think I've had two years now to kind of digest the grief of my mom passing away and let some things go. And that all helped with, with that. I'm learning to be open to learning more about my mom from my dad rather than blaming him for things that went down with my mom. Um, that was 51 grams of nuts. I'm going to grind this peanut into peanut butter. Also, I need to throw in a little bit of salt. because I'm pretty sure that would have happened decades back. is what we call luck. It's luck that it didn't burn out. You know, I had no idea. Let's see. Let me see what the nut thing is about. Okay, almond butter has to be homemade. I have not yet had a single store-bought almond butter where I was like, this is worth it. I would say TJ's is probably closest to the expectation versus the price tag, but everything else is so expensive. Um, eating excessive indigestible things such as nuts, chocolate-covered espresso beans, popcorn, it can cause tears in my digestive system. You know what, girl? That's definitely happened to me already. The many years of binge eating and food abuse has probably torn up my entire stomach. Maybe that's why I already have ulcers. Um, that and stress. So appreciate the the call out, call in, heads up, but might be too late for this one.
I definitely think my mom had extreme enmeshment um, habits. And that was just her way of living. She constantly had to quote unquote better other people and um, would do a lot of like forcing upon me what she thought was the better way to live and the more secure way to live. Not in a mean way, just like in a very well-intentioned way, which made it even harder for me to, to understand why it was important for me to say no to her at the time. So then it became a very volatile relationship between the both of us. But I'm learning it as I'm taking care of grandma and I'm seeing all the connections come together between all these generations of my family. And you know, it's, it's helping. So that's all I can do is allow myself to feel what I feel and try not to repeat the same mistakes. I'm adding some um, decaf herbal tea to my pear soup. So I probably also have some form of IBS or digestive issue, permanent digestive issue. Um, I do appreciate all the diet heads up. Doesn't mean I'm going to follow it because I've had a very long life of not listening to advice, but good to know. It'll sink in eventually. Ooh. Rocket launches. Okay, have fun. Um, all right, so we have fruit puree and nuts in here. I think we're gonna go heavy on cinnamon. Um, let me think about what other flowers I want in here. Probably the whole wheat flour. Maybe a little bit of vanilla. A lot of cinnamon. Maybe some nutmeg. Way too early for breakfast, but not too late for a snack. What else? Oh, you know what? Let's put in some cardamom extract instead of vanilla. I wonder what cooking vessel I'll need for this tiny little cake. Yo, the honking has been off the charts today. God damn, people. Let it up. It's fucking holidays. <sighs>
going to lower our oven temp to 350. I'm going to swap the sweet potato and the broccoli. Hopefully by the time the cake is ready, the broccoli will be ready too. I don't feel like putting oil in here today, so I'm going to go in with some oil. Sorry, did I say oil? I don't feel like putting in butter, so I'll put in some oil. A little over two tablespoons. Let's go in with some of our homemade molasses that I need to warm up in the microwave because it's solidified. It's solidified. Healthy gut biome is definitely my issue with all of my like eating disorders. For sure, I fuck things up, no doubt about it. Let's put some wheat bread in here. Yes. I have three shrunken scrotums of mango. I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm just waiting for them to dry. towards recovery if you're thinking that recovery means you don't ever think about food in a weird way again um, I think it's less likely to happen I thought about this a lot I think it's when you don't obsess about your relationship to food that that's the closest you're going to get to recovery and I'm not saying the goal is to avoid thinking about food or you know thinking back on your relationship to food, the goal is just like not letting it concern you um, and just realizing that it's not that important and realizing that it's not about trying to control everything. Which, yeah, I'm not there yet, but I'm also not stuck at all in the same place that I used to be. And I think this is what recovery means for me. It's understanding that the need for me to forgive myself and the need for me to be kind to myself is more important than any other objective goal of looking a certain way, of behaving a certain way, of eating a certain way. Um, it's choosing to prioritize my social relationships and my enjoyment of those circumstances more than I let my intrusive self-blame and self-hate and cycles of food obsession control my actions and habits. I think it's being kind above all to the fact that you're not perfect. Um, it's, it's a process. It's a process. I'm always happy to talk about disorder eating, for sure. I think the shame for a very long time about hiding my disorder eating was like the most poisonous part because it ensured my alienation from others. And most psychological disorders get worse with shame and with social isolation. 
And so in order for me to be as healthy as I can be, I need to be able to talk about it and I need to be able to find people who are compassionate towards, you know, my difference, my, my struggle, my attempt to heal, whatever you want to call it. And I don't actually think you can quit addictions cold turkey, like none of them. And somebody actually pointed this out to me in one of my recent videos concerning, you know, my relationship with food, that I made a statement in there that said it's not like alcoholism where you can quit cold turkey. It turns out you can't, like you can actually die from sudden alcohol withdrawal. So I think at the end of the day, addiction is a psychological disorder. It has a psychological cause to it. I think until you heal that psychology and that trigger and that trauma, curing the symptom of disordered eating is one thing. Curing the source that made you rely on disordered eating as a coping mechanism is a whole other thing. I think it really changed me when I started thinking about how do I stop the cycle of under eating, overeating, of feeling guilty, and more about like, yo, what is my reliance on food providing for me? And again, I really recommend that if you have troubles with food and eating and thoughts about food and eating, um, Ryan and Nicole on Instagram has been extremely helpful in reframing those types of thoughts for me. Um, highly recommend checking out those posts and see if maybe they can help you shift your mindset more into self-compassion and care and less into self-control, right? Eating disorders are all about exerting control when you feel otherwise completely out of control. It's about manufacturing a sense of safety for yourself when you have no safety in life. And so I think the main thing is to actually figure out what is causing you to feel insecure or hopeless that you escape to controlling your food relationship um, as a cure for that insecurity. It's a mental game. Yes, it is a physical addiction of sorts, but it has mental roots and you have to kind of work on those two in tandem with each other and also I've been like actively disordered eating for half of my life now which is to say coming up on two decades almost and just now am I starting to kind of connect the dots of where the source of my disordered eating began all the different factors that kind of accumulated and snowballed into my first manifestation of disordered eating and then realizing how my relationship with food transitioned from stage to stage of my life in which I always used it as a coping mechanism and I still do, right? And it's more of like taking an observation um, and a stance of curiosity to understand, okay, why am I doing this? That actually helped me more than I gotta stop doing this. Because when you are just adding on to the stress of feeling out of control by trying to exert control where none exists, you feel even more out of control. And the moment you have a trigger of not having complete control over your eating, you break and you suffer more. And that leads you to rely on that coping mechanism even deeper, which worsens the disorder in a lot of ways. So if you're making an enemy out of yourself and you're blaming yourself for still acting this way, whatever that way might be, that's not being your friend, that's not being your own counselor, that's not being your own advocate, that's just alienating yourself from yourself. And it's kind of all about getting in touch with yourself, you know, like figuring out what it is that you actually need that you're not getting 
Um, Ryan and Nicole is all about what is your actual unmet need that you're using food to patch. Um, and that is really crucial in recovery because you really got to figure out what is making me feel broken, what is making me feel sad, what is making me feel hopeless, and then realize that like food can help, but food isn't the cure for that. Mm, I want to go a little bit harder on this roast actually. I will take it out when the cake goes. Yes, that person, Gary. Thank you. Gary is our residential link puller. We remain grateful to your service. Glob of Greek yogurt. Yum. I'm making like a banana pear nut thing. I don't know what I'm making. I don't know what I'm making. We're making this together. Or you're watching me make this together. I don't know what I'm making. Um as it tends to go. Before I crack my eggs in here, I'm just gonna taste this for sweetness and see what we might need. I was talking with a friend about organizing. Um, selling yogurt out in the open, interesting. I was talking to a friend about organizing and how it's like, hierarchy is important in terms of organization, but we have to be able to take turns leading sometimes. And I feel like so much of our world is centered on the fact that like there's a state like a, like a kind of stabilized hierarchy that don't allow for different voices to take turns leading. And that's to our detriment, right? Because everybody can provide different strengths at different times of the movement. And also it puts the rest of us out of practice and burns out the people at the top. So how do we enable each other to shine with their own strengths and skills um, and respect each other for each other's different gifts that we all bring to the table, but might not be useful at one particular time, but can be so fundamentally crucial at another time. And staying open to the fact that like objectives change, projects change, visions morph. Um, again, it's about building community. And I feel like a lot of organizations have a sort of fake community where not everyone is valued equally because of this kind of patriarchal structure in our world and I'm not like blaming any of us but I'm just saying like be mindful of it I guess because we want to be as strong as we can together I don't know what freeform jazz is, but thank you. <laughs> that feels sweet. Like, I know what jazz is, obviously, but I don't know that the techniques of how to freeform jazz, you know what I mean? But that sounds sweet, thank you.
The thing about Budget Eats was I was so stressed about, you know, completing those videos for work that I often plan the menu for the most part, like at least 80% plan the menu the night before because I had limited natural light to shoot off of every day working from home. I didn't want to shoot forever. I kind of had to like plot out the cooking times a little bit, but then when things went wrong, like my mental health truly dipped because I was so stressed about handing in the project on time. And now outside of the constraints of work, I've kind of like, it's not to say that I didn't have joy in cooking for Budget Eats. I tr truly did enjoy everything that I did. And I'm so proud of the work that the team pulled together to put those videos out. But it's just so different when you don't have constraints of measuring up to other people's demands and commands. Um, So I feel like truly blessed that I don't have to do that anymore. Baking soda, baking powder. Getting to buy baking soda. It's everywhere too. I don't know why I keep forgetting to buy it. I love how baking soda immediately bubbles and lightens and changes the color of any batter goes into. Well, you can't see it in this shitty lighting, sorry. But it's fun, let me assure you, it is. Oh yeah, I got none of the ad revenue, so, you know. I also just love, I love that you guys sometimes use my videos to keep you company in everyday chores. Um, it's kind of like how I love cleaning with um, podcasts on sometimes. Some oats going in here as well. any podcasts that I'm into. There's a mental health podcast that releases an episode maybe every Sunday that a viewer recommended to me a couple of years ago that I keep track of. But other than that, I've been looking for podcasts. I recently found one that was talking about relationships um, and like mindfulness that I listened to while I was showering. It makes me feel less alone sometimes, but I only listened to one episode and I don't really remember it. And I honestly think it's one of those episodes where, um, it's one of those podcasts where like if you listen to one show, you kind of get the mentality of the podcaster and she talks in a very gentle, calming, soothing way and it moves very slowly. And I don't think I'm in the mood for that all the time. Why did, they, why did they not release the revenue? Because it's their intellectual property. Nobody who worked for Delish, who works for Delish, as far as I know, gets any of the ad revenue. I think one of my episodes brought in over 30 to 40K in ad revenue, um, maybe over a year or a month, or I don't know, but never saw a single cent of it. Um, so, you know. Hi, which paper? Yeah, you should probably not stay. <laughs> but I'm glad you popped in. Thank you for popping in. It's, it's one among many reasons of why we needed a union, you know? And ultimately, I was um, getting annoying for them. I was being uncooperative and I was being very vocal about the union and I got fired. And you know what? Good, because that was four and a half years of my life at a single place, and honestly,
After my mom died, I was ready to move on with my life and do something else. Just adding in some milk to kind of dilute the batter to the desired consistency. Oh shit, I never added in my eggs. Oopsies. Thank you to my friend for his expired eggs that are perfectly fine. Perfectly fine, y'all. Your mom is a big fan of mine too? That's awesome. I love it when people watch me with their family or with their pets, which are family. It delights me to no end. The fridge clean out episode was one of my favorites. I would say that and my mom dying, not the act of my mom dying, but kind of the tribute to her ingredients. Those are my two most personal ones. I think the fridge clean out really gave you a look into like what I hoarded and what I, what kind of stuff I bought for myself. And I think obviously, you know, the, the, the mom, the dead mom budget eats was a little gaze into my more Chinese culture and, um, it was super personal and you know I didn't have I didn't have a, a memorial or a funeral for my mom and I kind of felt like that episode was in a way and I'm super thankful for the team the video team at Delish for allowing me to to make that video happen but um, Zach put in so much editing brain power into that episode but yeah that was just like my way of kind of honoring my mom with with the public um, at a job that she finally for the first time in my life felt happy for me for because she felt like for the longest time I wasn't secure working minimum wage in restaurants and she was worried for me and when I had my job at Delish and I got you know kind of internet famous for budget eats like she was so happy she was definitely proud I think but she was just like contented for once that I kind of had made it it's cool that she didn't live to see me getting fired, but it's also awesome that I got fired. Like, it kind of makes me feel a little bit badass, you know? My salary at Delish. When I first started as a test kitchen assistant, I think I was being paid hourly. 15 an hour at first, then they upped me to 20 an hour, maybe upped me to 25 an hour when I passed my thousand hours. Um, Hearst works off of contractor labor, which before the union kicked into place was very commonplace. They would put everyone on, on a 1,000 hour limit and told them at the interview that once you pass 1,000 hours, you can't continue, um, that there would be no job prospects, and I accepted that. But apparently, I guess, I was so valued that they let me continue. And then finally, um, I, I started March 2018 as a contractor, then in June of 2019, they finally made me full-time. As a contractor, based on my hourly rate before taxes, I was making almost close to 60k. At the time of full-time hire, they offered me 43k, and I said, yo, this is a demotion. I understand there's benefits associated with this full-time position, but like I'm basically taking over 25% pay cut to take this full-time position. Wrote them kind of like an angry email, and they gave me a title change to test kitchen manager with a $2,000 bump. So my salary when I was hired full-time was 45K, and um, I was obviously pretty upset about that. And they also told me I can't work overtime, so I didn't log overtime for maybe three months, and then I was getting my pay stubs, and they had all these deductions on them, and I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. So I started logging my overtime, and I think um, that combined with the pandemic, um, combined with Budget Eats 
going popular combined with Bon Appetit burning down in June of 2020, they gave me a sudden, unexpected, unasked for raise from that 45K to 83K. Unheard of, right? It's almost like a doubling of my salary. Um, which at which point I was disqualified from logging overtime, but you know, I obviously worked a lot of overtime for budget eats because I would be shooting for eight to 12 hours, brainstorming after that was done, sorting all the video files, transferring the files, and then doing my other food editor work on top of filming for budget eats. So yeah. I hope that answers your question. turned into like a molasses pear cinnamon nutmeg nut cake thing I don't know what it is anymore it's not a brownie though there's no chocolate in here and you know what I didn't even taste it it's probably not sweet enough tbh but oh well it's going into the bake we're gonna take the broccoli out and we're gonna put the cake in. Yum. We're gonna check up on the sweet potatoes. Oh yeah, sweet potatoes feel done too. Very done. shut down but people you know quote unquote canceled them because Sola came out with the fact that they weren't paying um, all of their video talent equally and uh, it seemed kind of like racially biased and I kind of laughed when that thing came out because I was like literally none of us gets paid for our video appearances at Condé Nast there's a different salary and contract for video appearances at Delish it was just part of your salary. I didn't get paid for any of my video appearances unless it was branded material. So, you know, at least Hearst is a equal opportunity denier. because when we were unionizing um, somebody accidentally posted in the work slack this document that showed how much editor-in-chiefs at Hearst can make in bonuses they can make so much money in bonuses that far exceed our salaries which means there was finally an explanation for why they were pushing so hard for metrics to be hit because once we hit certain view numbers visitor numbers to site all of those numbers they get like raises, bonuses at the end of the year that amounted to over $100,000 if they fulfilled all the categories. Meanwhile, we were fighting for a salary floor of like $50,000 for people. Go figure. Yep. 
Um, and it's a chain of hierarchy too, right? Editor-in-chief sits at top, and then you have all the managers of the different teams. And so the editor-in-chief never calls everyone into a meeting. They just like breathe down the necks of the managers and then let the managers handle their teams to like get the numbers up. And oftentimes it's a mad dash to get numbers up because like we don't know what gets numbers up. Sometimes Google Analytics changes metrics, which fluctuates site visits. So SEO team like works extra hard to try to change the way we format our articles or like how to get them to rank higher on search results and you know video team has like put out more videos even though we're not hiring more video editors um we pour a lot of money into reconstructing a test kitchen but we don't actually hire more editors to be on camera talent we don't pay them for on camera talenting um folks who are younger who are just getting into the media game are just thankful and grateful to be there and that's what they count on is for you to be thankful and grateful just to be there so that they don't have to pay you shit because you know as a new entry person into the game all you want is to be there and belong there so they'll take advantage of that um and they'll not pay you and that becomes the status quo I'll never forget in one of our earliest union busting meetings, um, the president of Hearst Magazines, who was then fired for apparently sexual misconduct a few months later, was like, Hearst has a history of taking care of families. Uh, it's, it's a choice to work here. You don't have to work here. And basically telling us that like, we, if we don't like it as it is, we need to leave and you know, Workers who unionize want to do their jobs. They like their jobs. They just don't like being exploited. So truly hurtful rhetoric from management to be like, if you don't like it, leave. And that's actually what my manager told me in one of our most tense meetings right before I got called into HR meetings that then led to me getting fired two months later, was like, if I were you and I were unhappy here, I would leave. It's the same rhetoric. assistant honestly I didn't even want to appear on camera I just like I liked cutting up vegetables putting them into pretty bowls assisting um, when things went wrong and remaking a second batch of cookies if the first one burnt like I just like being a kitchen slave because I had come out of kitchen work um, restaurant work but they kind of edged me into, into videos and then when the pandemic happened, I was the only one at home with a proper camera, with actual background in photography, and capable of shooting my own videos that weren't on cell phones, you know? So I kind of organically transitioned into the role that I took on, but I still remember my mom passed away in October. I was on vacation. I ended up taking the rest of my PTO and then asked for further bereavement. Um, and it came out later that like my coworkers chipped in on their PTO time to ensure that I could take the time that I needed to sort out my affairs, which I'm, again, eternally thankful and grateful for my coworkers at Delish. It's not the workers' fault. It's just company culture and management and just like the whole culture of not giving workers what they need to actually make a living wage but um i remember coming back from bereavement like less than a month back and my editor-in-chief was like i have a very exciting proposition for you and you know you don't have to say yes but i want you to be open-minded and it was a tv show that i ended up turning down because of hr breathing down my neck about speaking up about my manager later that apparently was the reason for why i got fired Apparently for turning down the TV show in the way that I did, I had ruined business relationships and made me insubordinate. Um, so, you know, they just wanted me to kind of be more for them, um, expand to TV platforms and TV shows, and I didn't really want to. I was happy being a test kitchen assistant forever. Um, I was happy being a test kitchen manager even. And when they concocted the, the role of senior food producer, which was a title that had never existed before in the history of Hearst, I don't think, um, 
during lockdown, I was like, okay, whatever. I guess you had to make a whole new title for me to, to justify this extreme salary bump. Um, and you know, I went into those meetings about the TV show and we, we explored ideas. They pitched me shows. I was like, I don't know. How about this? How about that? And actually the last TV show idea that they pitched, I was truly excited for. Um, but when I realized that I can't speak up about mismanagement at work without getting punished for it, when I realized that HR didn't have my best interests um, at heart, when I realized that they were just digging for ways to bury me alive, I was like, you know what? I don't really want to be further involved financially with Hearst. Um, so, and that made me useless to them, I guess, and was the last string in a long string of ways in which I had been insubordinate. Um, that led to me getting fired. And here we are, cooking sweet potatoes and broccoli in the comfort of my own kitchen. I'm not actually sure what the legality of me sharing those show ideas is. I don't want them to like litigate against me just in case because they have a whole team of lawyers. But it was basically like a cooking competition show where um, a solid roster of different food personalities, of which I would be one, would go to different cities and cook and shop. I hope they don't sue me. And if they do, I hope the answer was worth it. Um, but I, I, whatever. In the last confrontational meeting, I simply suggested to my manager that, hey, I don't think our team meetings are actually productive and I feel very lost coming out of them. And I, I gave him a document that um, was very clear in what are the steps to making a meeting more like scaffolded and structured so that everybody walks away with a clear vision in mind of what their task is because we had been working with this um, manager for so many months and it was just like disorganization after disorganization where he wouldn't even know what I was doing. He would make me assign myself recipes to develop. He would make me assign myself deadlines to hit. And I was just like, okay, am I doing your job? Because if I am, then can we do these meetings separately? I didn't say that to him, but that was where my brain was. And I guess he caught on to that feeling. Um, and maybe also recognized a, a sense of inadequacy in himself. I'm not sure, but basically he turned it into like um, a framework of me racially attacking him and said that, you know, it wasn't my place to lecture him. And I said, okay, well, I, that wasn't my intention. Um, but yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't really stand to work there any longer with that kind of incompetency. And um, I was burning out unionizing on the bargaining committee too, and I was just like up to my neck in discontent there, so. <coughs> I truly am better without them. You know, obviously I have new life stressors as we all do, but I'm happier with scrotum sweet potatoes and scrotum mangoes. Um, and there are way worse things that people have gone through. And you know what? Seeing the ins and outs of how HR works, fascinating, eye-opening. Like, I've always heard about how not to trust HR, but I did not experience it firsthand until that happened to me. And now I fully understand. And how crucial it is to see that process take place and experience it for yourself in order to understand why the system is so fucked up and why you can't just rely on authorities um, and why they actually don't mean the best for you even though they say they do and even though they say they're there for you, the police are not your friends. HR is cops. Do not trust them. <laughs> know that everything that you say will and definitely, definitely will just be used against you. Um, I thought I was doing the right thing by telling them a full log. I logged. 38 pages of incidents 
where it was clear that my manager was not doing his job, was not fulfilling his job description. I brought it up to my editor in chief. I brought it up to the HR. I shared all those documents with them. And that was evidence in their view of why I was insubordinate. Um, it was not me trying to say, hey, I think we need better management. Maybe our, our manager needs to change the way things work, or maybe we need a different manager. It was seen as a personal attack where I was fully trying to say, hey, this workplace isn't organized um, and they're okay functioning dysfunctionally. So I'm not okay functionally dysfunctionally. Um, so I, I got cut loose and that's great because I'm not here to live my life in dysfunction like that. I have my own dysfunctions that I have to work through. I don't need work to add to that. <laughs> and the HR lady, oh my God, she was such a good actor. The first two meetings that were non-disciplinary, she was like a therapist, so calm, so gentle, so like soothingly probing. And then, oh, I didn't put a timer on the cake. And then when it turned into my final warning meeting, where I had no first or second or third warning, it was suddenly a final warning meeting. Like she turned into Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Um, like her hair was like, expressionistic okay her facial expressions tip top like her her voice her accusations the way she shut down my union rep when we asked questions and clarifications like amazing performance i'm so glad i got to see that it was like oscar worthy the change in character holy crap and then the last meeting where i got fired a total of four hr meetings the last meeting where i got fired it all of a sudden turned into like this is happening. This is why you got fired. Here's your severance package. Here are the terms. And I'm so sorry it had to end this way. And I'm so sorry that we had to meet this way. And it's very clear that you were so good at your job and we wish you the best of luck. And know that we're here for you. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're here for me? Okay. What an experience, y'all. I think tomorrow we will make carrot cake. The cakes will never end. We'll make carrot something. Carrot soup? What do we make with carrots tomorrow? Soup? Um, Cause right now it's 9.30 and I can't go live anymore. But yes, tomorrow, dollar carrots will be the star of our show. This dip that we made yesterday with our yogurt and our mayo, so good the day after, and I'm just gonna eat a broccoli. And dip it in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yum. So good. Mayo yogurt dip. Get your veggies in. Makes everything delicious. crisp tender I think carrot ginger soup sounds good with like a little yogurt mixed in at the end do I go live often this week almost every day because I don't have work and I'm sick at home so I'm not doing much else all the lives get saved to my page.
So if you go to my YouTube landing page, you'll see there's videos and there's lives. All the lives are saved there. I've maybe deleted two or three lives in my lifetime where I revealed some piece of personal information that I just couldn't leave on the internet. Um, yeah, that's about it. Everything else, the pixelated, the uglies, the borings, the farties, they're all there. Thanks for your well wishes. Mm, I'm not going off just yet, but soon. Definitely before 10 p.m. here. The cake is rising. I don't know how long it's been baking, but I would like to take the cake out for sure. And I'm, I'm currently enjoying eating way too much broccoli, which I know will give me gastrointestinal bloating later, but so it goes. No set schedule, James, because I don't want to make the lives feel like work and I don't want to behold myself to certain times. I just like to kind of be organic about it. So sometimes I'll program it 10 minutes before going live. Sometimes I'll program it an hour before going live, but some people have problems with getting my notifications, but I think if you do, you know, click the bell, subscribe and all of that, they should alert you when I go live. But if you have YouTube notifications off on your phone, then you might not get alerted. Your mileage may vary. Broccoli is a success though. So good. But yes, once. It's okay. I'm not like a huge fan of it, but I, I could definitely get down with a bowl of it. <coughs> yep. Definitely if home alone. That is definitely a home alone food. For a good reason. Different cultures have different halwas. Um, I think usually like a generally Middle Eastern dessert, some of them are made with semolina, some of them are made with carrots and nuts, some of them are made with other kinds of grains ground up, but it's kind of just like a really thick pudding -y thing. It's distinct from sesame halva, which is like um, basically like sesame candy in a way. Google it. It's very confusing. This term encompasses so many things. Before y'all go, if you're interested, I would like to give you a taste test of the cake that we made yesterday. And I ended up um, giving Samira half of that cake because she said she'll take some home to her family. And I said, yes, that sounds great. I did warn her, it is very spicy though. And it truly is very spicy. drama guys right who needs all this drama in their lives not I
and we should also put nigella seeds in our carrot ginger soup tomorrow because health love the drama but not to live in it? Is that why reality TV is so good? Everybody loves reality TV. And everybody loves to hate on reality TV while loving it too. What's up with that? Anybody d dig into the psychology of that? Curry masala invention. Okay. Isn't masala just a spice mix and isn't curry like a dish made with a spice mix? Who's your favorite character on Baldur's Gate? I think Aaron really likes the rat in that game. Mmm, I'm starting to smell the cake, guys. Ooh, it smells good. Wonder if we should make an icing for it. That'll have to be tomorrow. together I'm down to watch some trashy TV I think that will be actually really good for my mental health tonight just know that I don't have Netflix anymore what up Silicon Valley how's the rent over there flavor of love Tiffany Pilar never heard of it shows yeah I would hate watch the bear for sure I really don't I couldn't I couldn't get myself past two episodes I hate the acting I hate the screenplay I hate everything about it I love the good place I was obsessed until like maybe season three and I was like y'all are pushing it Maybe after you watch like three or four episodes, it's one of those shows where people tell me you just have to stick with it. No, I will not. If I don't like you by episode two, I'm not going to watch more of you. It's your job to make me want to watch you. I'm not going to watch you and stick around to find out. There are other shows I can be wasting my life on. They ranked it number one show this year, The Bear. Why? Why? life lived only in disagreement with others 
All right, well, at least we have a lot of sweet potatoes for grandma and maybe me. So hopefully she enjoys this more than the kanji I've been making her. I hope it brings her a little extra joy. responsible for her every happiness even though she has so few happiness moments in her life now who am I to say just too chaotic. Even as a kid, I was like, yo, I'm not trashy enough for this. But you know what I am trashy enough? Maury. I wanted Maury to be like my uncle or grandfather. I tried to watch Succession. I could not make it past the first episode. The way it's shot reminds me of The Office. The subject matter is not really all that funny. The pacing of it is just so incongruent with what I expect out of a show of that subject matter. I don't know if it's supposed to be a comedy or a drama. I don't really know how I'm supposed to be emoting. It's so confusing and jarring for me, so that's a pass for me. I know, a lot of people love Succession. I just can't watch it. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I don't get it. It's not sexy to me. Here's half of the cake. Again, frosting does not stick to the plastic wrap at all. Isn't it amazing? Here's the crumb of the cake. Very dense, very gingerbready. I don't have Apple TV. I don't have anything, basically. Okay, let me check on this first. Oh, she's done. We can turn this shit off. We have the same taste in shows. I like the first and second season of Barry, hated the third, absolutely did not know what's going on in the fourth. Very disappointed with how that show went. Um, what else? I did love The Good Place. I remember the first show that I ever remember watching and loving with people was Arrested Development in college. Um, what else? Mm, this cake is so good. It has that gingerbread profile and then the spice of the ginger melts onto your tongue and like inflames it in the most pleasantly sweet way possible. Um, it heats up your tongue and makes you feel all warm inside. And then if you take a bite with the chocolate frosting on top, which is glossy and fudgy and clean of a bite. Mm. Delicious. I mean, tea is always good. I don't know though, you should Katarina, everybody's different. You know yourself best because you've lived this long knowing how you behave while sick. Can't, can't really prescribe you anything but rest, any kind of liquid. Um, maybe stay away from too much caffeine so you can actually rest well. Um, just rest and liquid and some simple carbs and if you have a fever, go easy on the protein. Your body might not be able to break it down. 
Also, just eat whatever makes you happy. When you're sick, the goal is kind of just get food in. It's so good. I'm so happy with this cake. I might have another slice. Um... Yeah, this is basically like the cough syrup that I like for sore throat. You can take it by the spoonful straight. It's like molasses. Or you can dilute it in warm hot water for like a eucalyptus-y sweet tea. Okay, what other shows? What other shows? Let me take this cake out and show you guys what we baked. She bouncy. I'm getting so good at this uh, recipe less baking, I think. Corners are peeled, tough, um, nice bounciness on top. Maybe I'll make a frosting for it tomorrow or some kind of glaze since it's not very sweet. Um, mm, should we brush some maple on top? Let's brush some maple on top. Or honey? Maybe honey. Maybe honey is better. You guys are really going so hard with this alcoholic thing. Good night, Pay. Okay, I gotta be honest with you, I did enjoy White Lotus. The first one got a little bit like too cerebral for me. The second one I feel like was way more funner as a show. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a serious show for me, but I would say it's like a very nice combination between human psychology, social commentary, and just like an enjoyable, bingeable show. Um, I've enjoyed the episodes of Atlanta that I've seen, too. Have a good stream, Sean. I'm going to call it a night, folks. Thank you so much for joining me on my sick journey. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow for some carrot soup. Vitamins, 
liquid, sleep, rest, happiness, friends. Bye.